I'm Dan Winton, and I've been asked to read the scripture lesson for this morning. To put this particular scripture reading in context, it is from the uh, epistle known as Hebrews, which is found in the New Testament and which was written after the death and resurrection of Jesus. Indeed, the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him, no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account, Jesus, the great high priest. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with the boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Thank you, Dan. Will you please pray with me? Speak, O God, for our souls hunger and thirst for your love. Teach us, O God, for our minds are open to your wisdom. Transform us, O God, for our lives are surrendered to your way. In Christ's name, amen. As we're getting to know each other, I'd like to share a little known fact about myself. I love suspense and horror movies. I do. I know, I know all the reasons why I shouldn't. I agree. Some of these films can be, shall we say, unseemly, <laughs> crude, uncouth, even ghastly. Nevertheless, when my children were younger, my daughter knew the release of a new horror film meant date night with dad. Watching horror movies are still some of the fondest memories for she and I. That and watching Law and Order SVU. Yeah. When she was a teenager, I, we couldn't watch an episode without my pausing the show and using the storylines as a teachable moment. It went something like this. Pause. Don't do what they did. <laughs> Disclaimer, this is not parenting advice. <laughs> but I digress. When I was younger, one of my favorite horror or suspense movies was the 1999 M. Night Shyamalan film, Six Sense. Ah, yeah, anyone remember that one? It became the number one supernatural thriller of all time. The plot includes a child psychologist played by Bruce Willis, whose nine-year-old patient claims to have a special ability to see dead people. Now, most people remember this movie because of the surprise twist at the end. It's been 25 years, but spoiler alert, <laughs> at the end of the film, we learn that Willis's character is in fact dead himself. At the end, we learn that the entire movie has been an exercise in eavesdropping on the conversation between this gifted child and the disembodied psychologist. So good, so good. In my mind's eye, I can still see the look of Bruce Willis's character when he learns he is indeed dead. However, the part of the film that came back to me when reading this morning's scripture, the lectionary text this morning, are the words of the child when he first shares this gift with his psychologist. The little boy in the film says, I want to tell you my secret now. I see 
dead people, walking around like regular people. They don't see each other. They only see what they want to see. They don't know they're dead. Hmm. The art of storytelling fascinates me. There are many things about this scene that capture my attention, but I keep coming back to the look on Bruce Willis's face, a master class in acting, no doubt. He was able in that moment to portray it as both an aha moment while also signaling a sense of being completely and honestly seen. Don't be mistaken. To be seen is a scandalous concept. There's a part of us that desires it, demands it even. See me. Acknowledge me. Get to know the real me. Yet, there's a part of us that's terrified by it. It's the little kid in all of us, no matter how big and strong we are how rich and powerful or smart and accomplished one might be, we each have a little kid in us that says, I wonder if they'll like me if they knew the real me. You know, another thing that haunts me about that scene with Bruce Willis is that his young patient could see something about him that he was unable or unwilling to see about himself. There's nothing that terrifies we grown-ups more than not being able to save face. Or as my grandmother might say, don't get caught with your slip showing. <laughs> While it's been difficult for any of us, it's difficult for any of us to truly see ourselves, being self-aware, is a gift that keeps on giving. What a farce it is to be the butt of a joke, but unaware. To be dead and not know it. <laughs> or to need help, but can't recognize it. Or to actually be the problem, yet be oblivious to it. What a shame to be led by ego, personal agenda, or self-serving ideas, all while being convinced that somehow one's own viewpoint or perspective is the only one that matters. Honestly, those kind of blind spots scare me. It's my version of a real-life horror movie. See, any one of us can be genuine, yet genuinely wrong. One can be passionate, but still misguided. One can be emboldened, but around misplaced priorities. One might even be the loudest voice in the room, while also being the most erroneous one. I believe that's why we all desire to be seen even if we are somehow frightened by it. Because inevitably, to be seen is to be laid bare, to be exposed, to even be stood corrected in some area of our life. Though it give us trepidation, friends, we cannot avoid being seen. We cannot hide. The writer of Hebrews says it this way, Indeed, the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. In other words, when you and I surrender to the wisdom of God's word and the leading of God's spirit, it helps it helps cut to the core of the matter, to the heart of who we are and what truly motivates each of us. Or may I say it plainly, may I say it plainly, 
A life surrendered and humbled before the divine? Well, it helps us cut through all the BS. You know, big stuff. <laughs> See, this gift of self-awareness is freely given, but it will cost us something. It will cost us vulnerability. Vulnerability is one of the most feared words in the Christian lexicon, right behind evangelism and tithing. <laughs> but church, there's no way around it. We can't have a deep personal relationship with a living and loving God without some skin in the game. We must be willing to be seen because I'll say again, to be seen is to be laid bare, to be exposed. We cannot avoid being seen. We cannot hide from God. I'll be honest with you. The word expose is not one of my favorites, likely because it's too close to the word expose. I've always said there are two words you never want associated with your name, embattled and expose. <laughs> but expose seems like the most appropriate word because it indicates something being seen despite an attempt to keep it hidden. And isn't that just like the Holy Spirit? poking around in the stuff. We just assume to handle ourselves. Thank you very much, God. You know, we want to talk about what they did. And all the Holy Spirit wants to talk about is our part in it. Indeed, the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. We want to forget the trauma and the abuse and that's all God seems to want to talk to us about, piercing until it divides soul from spirit. We want to pretend like everything is perfectly splendid in our lives, and the spirit keeps revisiting the tender places, you know, the ones we don't talk about or share in mixed company. Ah, God is able to judge the thoughts and the intentions of the heart exposed, vulnerable, seen. Well, don't take my word for it. This morning's text goes on to say, and before God, no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Friends, we can hide from people we can put on airs and save face all we want with each other. But there is no hiding from God. <laughs> In fact, hiding and pretending and inauthenticity is poison to the soul. God is truth. And how can one be in relationship with living and active truth when engaged in a life of pretense? or inauthenticity, or while desperately trying to avoid doing the hard things or having the hard conversations just to save face. Oh, but church, there is good news. The writer of Hebrews goes on to say, we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Oh, beloved, vulnerability is hard, but it's so worth it. It's worth it, first of all, because as the text indicates, our vulnerability produces boldness. When you and I lay it all before God in the full truth of who we are, warts and all, when there is nothing hidden or unsaid or unexamined between us and our creator, then we can truly be bold when coming to God in prayer 
able to receive the mercy and the grace made available to help in our time of need. But the problem for too many is we're too afraid of the vulnerability required to admit our human fragility, to actually lay ourselves exposed and unafraid before the throne of grace. Oh, but friends, being in covenant with God means we have nothing to fear. For at the center of that covenant is not a list of rules and regulations, do's and don'ts, but rather our covenant with God is centered in relationship. And when Christ church is at her best, it represents a covenant with one another, also centered in relationship. For local church covenanting can only work when relationship with each other and with the community is centered and prioritized. Furthermore, friends, local, local church covenanting, it's the kind of relationship that can only work when we recognize each other's need for grace, right along with our own desperate need for it. And that brings us right back to vulnerability, vulnerability before God and the subsequent acknowledgement that we each have an innate need to be seen. We all have a need to better see ourselves and others. This is the beauty of the three-way covenant we talked about last week. Our relationship with God strengthens our relationship with each other. Because, friends, time spent laid before God, well, it helps us see that those of us who live in glass houses <laughs> can't afford to throw too many stones. Can you say amen? amen? This morning, I'd like to end with prayer. Please pray with me. Here we are, O oh God exposed, vulnerable, and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Help us, Holy One, to truly see ourselves in the mirror of your wisdom. While that may sound scary to us, we know in your loving care, it doesn't have to be. May we, O oh God, step into the boldness of your love for us. May we fully receive the mercy and grace you have provided in our time of need. In Christ's holy and matchless name we pray. Amen.